if you took a time machine back to 2007, you'd see the Spurs sweeping the Cavaliers for the NBA title. That was the height of the Big Three area, era and also LeBron James' first NBA Finals. He was just 22 years old, and after it was all over, we got this nice moment of LeBron and Tim Duncan running into each other in a hallway. Great job, man. Yeah, yeah, hey, man. I love how you're on 15 minutes. Man. Stay that way, man. Yeah, stay that way. You're going to drive these guys. And this is going to be your league in a little while. But uh, I appreciate you giving us this here. <laughs> <laughs> This is going to be your league in a little while, but I appreciate you giving us this one. Duncan and LeBron had cameras following them everywhere back then. Not shockingly, there was no camera following around Jacques Vaughn. I don't know. Vaughn had hardly been a point of conversation. He was a journeyman on the Spurs bench who played about 10 minutes a game in those 2007 finals, averaging exactly two points per game. Fast forward then 13 years to last night when Vaughn was again on the same court as LeBron this time as the interim coach of the Nets. Vaughn got the gig after the team abruptly parted ways with Kenny Atkinson a few days ago. And while Vaughn has been a head coach before, a short if unexceptional stint with the Magic, um, his name has again been notably absent from the conversation. Actually, many news stories skipped over him entirely when they reported Atkinson's departure, jumping right into speculation over whether guys like Ty Lu or Mike Mark Jackson might get the job eventually. But whether he is being talked about or not, for at least 20 games, Jacques Vaughn is the coach of the Brooklyn Nets, and so far he is making the most of the opportunity. On Sunday, the Nets beat Chicago, and last night the Nets, after that, held off a scorching Lakers team that had just dispatched the Bucks and Clippers. Maybe a letdown game was inevitable for L.A., and indeed the Lakers looked disinterested in parts of the third quarter, but they certainly rallied toward the end. This three from Anthony Davis, this tied the game with just 43 seconds left. Look at that pose. Mm, Woo. Hold it. <laughs> Let them all see. Yeah. Then it was Spencer Dinwiddie's turn, nice 18-footer, to give the Nets the lead. Right? It's like that talk. <laughs> He's from around know. here, it's too. always a foul. LeBron to the hoop. Oh, mm, yeah, no, that, was that so roll big. was savage, guys. Look at that this. That was a big, big miss right there. Woo! And then Ooh. finally we got a LeBron kicking out to Anthony Davis, who had that Perfect. clean three that didn't go. Sealing the game for Brooklyn. Got to give the Nets bench some credit, by the way, on the AD miss. Look at Kevin Durant. He did the whole playground yell thing Garrett at Temple Davis too, right? as he shoots. <laughs> okay. It worked. After the game, most of the conversation was, again, not about Vaughn or even the Nets. It was more about the Lakers missing a chance to gain a game on the Bucks in the standings. But whether it's loud or quiet, Vaughn is now 2-0 as interim coach. And he's clearly working to communicate with players in a way Atkinson reportedly did not toward the end of his tenure. He's elevated DeAndre Jordan to the starting lineup, which has made KD and Kyrie happy. He's talking about adding new defensive sets. If he does well, if the Nets make a decent stretch run and rep themselves honorably in the playoffs, will Vaughn have a real starting job shot at the job permanently? Probably no. not, actually. That's just not how the NBA works in high-profile situations on teams with big stars. Guys like Vaughn are rarely part of that conversation, but that doesn't mean they're not there, making their mark decade after decade. So, Fizz, you know Jacques Vaughn. Very well. What can he do? Can he do anything well, to earn this Nets job long term? Yeah, win games. I think it's just continue and continuing to really build strong relationships with those main guys, with those stars. But I'm going to tell you something about Jock Vaughn. Since I was a little kid, we've been together playing basketball. And Jock Vaughn is one of the greatest basketball minds I've ever been around. Wow. From when he was a young kid here in L.A., you can ask anybody in L.A. about his IQ. When he went to Kansas, he was one of the smartest basketball guards we've ever seen. And then at a certain point in the NBA, the super talent always ends up taking over. Sure. But from a thinking the game standpoint, teaching the game standpoint, guys respecting him and, and what he brings to the table, I'm hoping that he gets a, a real shot at this. Yeah, you know, the reality is two of the biggest voices in who's going to be the next coach, they're not playing in Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. Right. And so regardless of what he does with this team, the two probably most influential people he needs to win over aren't experiencing or they're experiencing it from the bench and street clothes or right. at home if you're Kyrie re re recovering and rehabbing. And so that is going to work against them. But that doesn't mean what he does here is meaningless or doesn't have value because right. as we know, this is a great 
proving ground to show other teams that are going to have openings, yeah, hey, I'm a pretty good coach. I can take a playoff team and, and make them, you know, play well and, and, and have them in that hunt, basically, to, to, to the postseason. And so, and especially when you talk about a guy like Doc Vaughn, a young black coach in this league, yes. guys who don't normally get multiple chances at being a head coach. He got one chance in Orlando. It didn't work out. And when was the last time you heard him as a candidate for any head coaching job? Not, not enough. Not enough. Not at all. You yeah. haven't heard him at all. So this is kind of a blessing in disguise for him, regardless of whether it ends up being the Nets head coach or not. He's able to showcase himself. He shouldn't have to, but he's able to showcase himself to other teams. Say, look, I'm still a good coach in this league, a candidate for your job. It's not just the kind of the new sexy names they bring up every year. I mean, and the reality is Kenny Atkinson didn't really have those two guys either. Kyrie right. Irvin's missed 44 games this year, and he never really got to build or experience what it would be like having those guys, and he still had his team in the seventh seed. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm still kind of – cloudy about the whole firing because I think Kenny is, is one of the brightest young coaches in the coaches state. stick up for coaches no matter what all the Always. time no matter what thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for more sports highlights and analysis be sure to download the ESPN app and for live streaming sports and premium content subscribe to ESPN plus